Hey guys, it's Intricate from AmigaLove.com. Today I want to walk you through some really interesting hardware, some of which I think many of you have probably never had in your own hands. I want to walk you through this old hardware and show you how special it was back in the day and compare it to some brand new magical hardware that just came out recently. So what I'm wondering is, how many of you have ever heard of the RAM Link? The what? The RAM Link. It's an amazing device by Creative Microdesigns, the same people who invented Jiffy DOS, the Super CPU, some of the amazing hard drive options and floppy drive options for the Commodore 64 128. No, that's not really ringing a bell. Should I have heard of it? Well, by the time it came out, a lot of folks in the United States had already moved on from the Commodore 64, but for the dedicated few that were still into it, it was like a, it was a whole new world. Okay, I'm intrigued. Continue. So basically what they did was they created a device that allowed you to add RAM and turn the RAM link into a monstrous RAM disk. I understand what those are, but why is this special? What made the RAM link so unique was that it actually came with its own power supply. So whatever programs you loaded onto it, when you turned off your Commodore 64 or 128, the RAM link kept those programs ready for instant load the next time you turned your machine on. Holy crap, how have I never heard of this? I know, right? And not only that, but the RAM link today, they're holy grail items, let's be honest. They're extremely hard to find. If you do happen to find one, of course, because of its scarcity, you're gonna pay a ton for it, usually several hundreds of dollars for these old devices. They're very, very cool. They're incredible. They're not for everyone to be able to just reach off the shelf and grab. They're really hard to get. The back bit, this new piece of magical hardware out of the Bay Area by E.B. Solomon, is basically a modern reinterpretation, in my opinion, of what the RAM link always promised. Instant loading of any program like that. Wait, so how's that different from like the ultimate cartridge, the 1541, or maybe some of these other disk drive emulators. The main difference is those literally are cycle exact to a 1541 or a 1581, and they're gonna be just as slow as the old devices. They're 10,000 times more stable and easier to replace. You don't have to maintain them. They're quiet, unless you wanna make them noisy. But the 1541 Ultimate, it's one of my favorite all-time devices for the Commodore 64 in the last 20 years but you're still gonna have to wait to load your programs. The RAM link and the back bit, they're like that. It's like magic when you see it in person. Within one to two seconds, you're in. There's no waiting for a disk drive. It's like a cartridge. It's like a cartridge image. It's incredible and anything, any D64, PRG, it also supports D71, D81, its own proprietary BBT files, at least for the back bit. It is absolutely incredible, just like the RAM link, but so much more. So let's take a deep dive and compare both of these products. I think in 2020, a lot of you are finally gonna have that RAM link experience at an affordable price. Well, well what are you waiting for? Let's get into it. I was hoping you were gonna say that. Okay guys, first I just want to walk through some of the various options that have been created out there since since the beginning of time and demonstrate how they're all trying to kind of accomplish the same thing but through different ways. So this is the RAM link. It is a humongous device. It plugs into the cartridge port. All of these options I'm about to show you do. It's metal, really solid. Uh, it has various plugs in the back which are labeled here. It has the ability to use a battery. If you don't have, um, or if you lose power in your house, say you have a, a thunderstorm come by, there is a way to hook up a battery to this too. So if you lose your power, you keep your files. Um, it has its own power supply. And obviously you've got a parallel port here, which is clearly labeled. Several little LEDs here to, for various uh, system status. And two buttons, the reset, 
uh, and it also has a drive swap and I'll explain that in a little bit. And then of course you can turn the thing on and off if you need to disable it. Sometimes there might be a conflict. Oh, I should also mention it also has uh, a pass through and it has the ability for a uh, RAM expansion unit. The way these were sold back in the day when these first came out, not everybody could afford the little RAM card you could put inside here. This thing can hold up to 16 megabytes of RAM. And that's actually how this one is currently set up. Um, not everybody could afford the RAM card or maybe they already had a RAM expansion unit on their Commodore 64 or more likely their C128 that was already being used. One of these guys, you can pop that right into here and give yourself an instant 128K of RAM, let's say, because you were combining it, for example, with the 128 into 256, which is pretty sweet. And utilizing this device, that data that you moved into that RAM expansion unit on this device, when used in conjunction, that data would never die. You could turn your machine off, turn it back on, and those programs instantly load. It's liquid fast, it's very, very cool. But you could also use an expansion cartridge if you wanted. You could use an easy, well, maybe an easy flash, pretty much anything. Um, you could pop right into this. That way you don't lose your cartridge port if you want to use something else in conjunction with the RAM link or just let the RAM link sit there and go for it. In recent years, many of us are familiar with this. This is the 1541 Ultimate 2, not the 2 Plus. This is the original. It has the little slot for the SD card micro right there. I actually really prefer this uh, design. I don't really like USB sticks sticking out of my uh, cartridge. It looks kind of janky in my opinion. It doesn't really matter. If you're just trying to load a file, who cares? The 2 Plus, I also have one and it's a fantastic device. Um, this one, you know, you have to use like some sort of little pointy object to try and get the thing out of there if you need to get it out of there. But it also needs to be plugged into your serial port on the Commodore 64 because it truly does behave like a cycle accurate disk drive. Fantastic device. One of my favorite devices in the last 20 years ever made for the Commodore uh, ecosystem, let's say. Then there's the Turbo Chameleon. And this basically, it's sort of a cyborg. It's, it really is a hideous looking thing, but it's, it tries to solve every problem that we never really had. In fact, you can run this thing as a standalone C64 emulator if you wanted to. It has all this other stuff for hooking up different peripherals like keyboards and mice and all kinds of stuff. Here's the place for your files to be inserted. I mean, it's just, it's just completely bonkers. The ability to add video. The reason why I got this not only does it act sort of like the 1541, it doesn't utilize a serial port. More importantly, it has an accelerator. And if you can't afford the CMD uh, Super CPU, which usually go for over $1,000 these days on eBay, they're really expensive. Um, this is actually, even though it's an expensive device, it's over $200 US, plus you have to ship it here. Compared to a super CPU, this thing is cheap uh, and it basically provides way more power uh, than a super CPU ever could. So <laughs> long story short, I got this because I really wanted to see what it was like to play Mario. Why don't you just get a Nintendo? That's not the point. I wanted to see what it was like to play the new Mario 64 uh, on the Commodore 64. Now the downside of this thing, you can't plug it into your 128, all right? This you can. This you can, and then there's this new device, and I'm gonna go into more detail on this, uh, plus Jan Beta and, and Evie herself have created videos about this device, which are sensational. They're gonna, they're, they go into every little detail, every little screen, that's not my intention here. One of the things that she did that I really, really like, right? This is where the little SD card goes with your, all this, you can go 32 gigabytes, it's insane. Um, she created it to where it uses the, the little SD card, not a USB stick sticking out of it, um, which could you know get knocked if you weren't careful. But she created on the case a nice little divot so it's easy to grab and push in and out. Phenomenal, something so simple like that, but it makes such a huge difference, right? You're not having to go try and find some little tweezers or 
screwdriver to pop that thing in and out. And you don't have a giant or even a small USB stick sticking out of it, which is totally jank in my opinion. This looks professional and I love it. It has one button and that is the back button when you're in the menu systems and I'll explain that later. Um, it allows you to easily go back. And then you've also got for firmware updates, you've got a, a USB uh, port here. Uh, and this little guy right here, I believe is in, uh, is to use a back bit button, which you can also buy. It's a, it's a cute thing. It's a, a big button. You can sit anywhere on your desk and just smash it rather than reach back behind. Cause on a C128D, for instance, trying to get back to the cartridge to go back is kind of a pain. Getting the back button way better. Uh, you can just set it next to your keyboard. Boop. There it is. It's so slick. It's like she thought of everything. Maybe she did. And she's continuously updating the thing. It also has one little tiny uh, LED light right here. So when it seeks the cartridge, you can tell it's working. So now what I want to do is I want to walk you through really quickly. We're not going to focus on these. These have been done to death. Um, I want to focus on the Ram Link first. Kind of show you, do a little drive around, drive by of how the Ram Link works and then compare it to this really quickly. So join me as we finally get started on this darn thing. All right, she's all plugged in, powered into the uh, plug down below. And all you gotta do is fire on your computer like you always would, turn on your monitor. So here we are in Ram Link land. Now, one of the things that's really interesting about the Ram Link, because it comes from CMD, or Creative Microdesigns, it has Jiffy DOS built in. In fact, it has its own kernel. And so when you have the Ram Link plugged in and it's in use, it actually has uh, Jiffy DOS enabled. Usually you have to install Jiffy DOS inside your computer as well as whatever drive you're using it with. That's still the case, but it essentially uses its own kernel now, so you don't have to install one inside your computer. You only have to install them inside the disks. But if you're using the Ram Link, it's all in one, it's all in one package. So if you're a Jiffy DOS fan, and I know there's thousands and thousands of people out there that, that they won't use a Commodore 64 unless it has Jiffy DOS installed because it's so much faster for disk access, absolutely. Ram Link has it built right in. In fact, you can see it across the top. Jiffy DOS 6.01, copyright of 1989 CMD. Pretty damn cool, right? Okay. So now how do you use it? The RAM link is seen by the computer as drive 16. You know, usually your 1541 is comma eight. If you have a second drive, comma nine. This is actually, even though it's in the cartridge port, it is viewed as drive 16. So if I were to say a list, I would say comma 16, hit return. It did a little seek there and it says, yeah. And right now my RAM link is empty. Now, because it has Jiffy DOS inside it, I happen to have a Jiffy DOS original user's manual and you can find PDFs of this online. Um, made back in Massachusetts. This was a little cutout you could put over your function keys so you could get to quick access, right? It has it all built in. So if I wanted to, these keys are legit because Jiffy DOS is loaded. So, right, F1 is directory, D list, load, save, scratch, which is just a kind of a weird term for Commodore to mean delete. All that stuff's built right into my function keys as well. And it uses the Jiffy DOS uh, kind of bizarre uh, nomenclature, right? The at symbol, stuff like that. Pretty cool. What people did back in the day was they would always have a drive connected, right? Whether it's a 1541, a 1571, 81, whatever your flavor, that would be something that they would then copy from drive to the RAM link and put it in, put it in its uh, basically virtual drive, right? I should also point out that the swap button that I showed you earlier, um, when I was flipping this device around in my hands, the swap button lets you change uh, whatever drives you have hooked up. Let's say I had a, a drive eight connected and this is drive 16. I can flip flop things. Pretty cool. On the fly like that, you're not having to play with uh, jumper settings. 
Now, it's not required to have a user's manual when you get a RAM link, but it sure is freaking sweet if you do get lucky enough to find one of these because the RAM link has a lot of features. And if you happen to be really into engineering, programming, things like that, some of the stuff that it can, that they dive into, and it has the Jiffy DOS user's manual here as well. Uh, some of the stuff that they get into is really complicated and uh, kind of fascinating. My eyes kind of glaze over when I read some of this stuff. So I'm like, what am I looking at here? I'm never going to do this in my life. But it does have a nice, um, very nice diagrams inside as to what all the different stuff will do. And highly recommend if you ever do get a RAM link to at least read through the first 10 pages or so. Actually, you're probably going to go down to about page 30 because it gets into all kinds of really interesting, uh, complex situations that you may find yourself using like the subdirectories and different partitions you can create. This is something that came with the RAM link and it actually has some really handy uh, RAM link utilities. Uh, and it also came with Geos utilities that were specific for RAM link owners. If you had Geos on your machine, oh my God, the, the, RAM, <laughs> the RAM link Geos uh, marriage is something special. I'm not gonna go into that in this video, but it's a very special marriage indeed. And again, mine's 16 megs, so I can I can throw a ton. People are always like, I got a 32 gigabyte SD. Okay, that's fine. But how much do you actually ever use? You can put a ton of really cool handy stuff inside of 16 megabytes. You can. And uh, let me show you how to do that. Okay, guys. So what I've done now is I've attached my 1541-2, which is probably my favorite original drive. I didn't have one back in the day. I actually had the original beige 1541, um, which visually I love the look of it. But the 1541-2 is a wonderful old school drive from Commodore. Nice and smooth and clean and quiet for the most part. Um, and what I did was I put the RAM disk utilities into it because uh, what I want to do is I want to do I want to move some stuff around. So let me show you how I did that. Got the 1541-2 which this is actually a new old stock drive I just pulled out of the box. I don't know if it's ever even been used. It's completely quiet. Check this out. Amazing. Totally, totally quiet. This is currently set to drive uh, 9, and this is drive 16. This could be set to whatever you want. But what I'm going to do really quick is I'm going to move the files from drive 9 over to the RAM link so that we can utilize them even further in the future. So really quick, what we're going to do is we're going to check out what's on the CMD uh, RAM link disk. Let me show you what that looks like. Whoops, because that's the wrong drive. You dumb head. Can you hear the 1541 too? Barely, right? That is pure elegance right there my friends that's a sexy commodore drive okay so it's got all this stuff on the disc and i'll do that one more time and stop it right there what we're looking for is f copy so let's go ahead and load f copy all right now this is a 39 block program so I usually like to think every block on a disc, if you're running off a pure 1541, or even one of these bad boys, 1541 Ultimate, uh, each block is about a second, give or take. So in about 30 to 40 seconds, F-Copy should load, and then we can run it. And here she is. So here's F-Copy. Whoa, this is a version from 1993. Look out, everybody. That's modern. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and set this up so that drive nine is my uh, source. And I'm then going to find the target 16. And that's the RAM link, right? And then what you have to do is you have to, uh, it's a little annoying, but you have to set the path for it. And I'm telling it to dump it in the root for now. And, and then what you wanna go do is actually select the files that you want to copy. So it's reading the directory of device 9 as the source. 
and I'm gonna go hand pick what I wanna move over. And mainly what I want is F copy, right? But since we're here, I might as well grab a couple of these other things too, because they're cool. And you never know if they might come in handy. Sure, why not? Um, by the way, the RAM link is fully uh, compatible with uh, one, Commodore 128. No issues there. It was, I think, honestly, the guys that created this thing, I think, really had the 128 in mind. Um, they were hardcore uh, pro users. Okay, uh, this is probably all I need. RAM tools sounds good. All right, that's it. And then when you're done, you hit copy. Sure. Now this is gonna take a little while. It's gonna move all of those files that I just selected over to the RAM link. I'm not gonna force you to watch that because nothing's happening <laughs> as far as you're concerned. Okay, so that process is done. And now we're back into regular DOS. And so what I wanna do next is I'm going to remove this amazing, awesome CMD disk. Thank you, CMD, we miss you. Um, and then what I wanna do is verify, let's take a look, right, at our RAM link and make sure everything's over there. Okay, those are the programs that were on that disk that I just copied straight over and now they're here. So now I can run F copy. So remember how it was about 30 some seconds before? So watch this. I'm gonna go ahead and load F copy, comma 16. It's done. Just like that. Just like that, yo. See how amazing, I mean, God, this is just so awesome. And check it out. Turn it off. Turn it off, turn it back on. Boom, now, let's look at that again. Okay, yeah, that sees it. There it is. Comma 16. Booyah, less than a second. It was less than a second. Okay, and it's called instant load on the RAM link. And it's, it's persistent. It's a virtual drive that is extremely fast, has tons of space, relatively speaking, for the types of files that we're talking about. And, oh my God, I love it. So what do I wanna do next? Next, I'm going to copy Montezuma's Revenge over from drive nine to uh, the RAM link, and we're gonna do a little speed test. Okay, guys, so here's my Montezuma's Revenge for Commodore 64 disc that I was telling you about. It's got the Atari version on the back, which is kind of cool. Uh, I'm actually not gonna do this because this, this particular program is rather small and it loads really quickly, and so you don't really get the full impact of how amazing instant load can be from a LAM, RAM link. So instead, what I did was I, I have a bunch of wares which include uh, Minor 2049er, which is a fantastic little ancient uh, platform game that I still like to play to this day. Um, and let me go ahead and load that up. I moved the drive over to drive eight and take a look at that particular program real quick. Okay. So you'll see it down here at the bottom. It's 65 blocks, so it's gonna take you over a minute, most likely, to load this program off of a disk, right? For example, if I were to do something like this and say comma eight. And there she goes. This is our experience. And it's not that different with the 1541 Ultimate because, and that's not, I'm not dissing this. I love this thing. This is one of the coolest things ever made for the Commodore 64 in general. Um, I love it. But it is, you know, to be completely cycle accurate, that means it's going to be completely slow. All right, I'm not going to force you to watch this, but it takes a while. You get the idea.
Okay, we're finally done. Do you want to make another copy? No. I want to live my life. And I'm going to go ahead and load my directory on the RAM link. Okay. And minor 2049 is right there at the bottom. Okay, remember last time? It was over a minute just to load this program. Okay, get your clocks ready, get your watches ready. It's done. <laughs> it's done. It's already done. There she is. What was that? It was less than a second. It's instant. It's instant. That is the RAM link, and this came out back in the freaking day, you guys. And at the time, sure, it was expensive, and RAM was not cheap. Look, you had to have either a really good job or some parents with really deep pockets back then. That was not me. Um, my goodness, my first job working at Taco Bell I was getting like $3.35 an hour, um, which at the time I was like, woohoo. <laughs> there are a couple things worth noting uh, with the RAM link. Number one, it, not all files work with it. If it's a PRG file, if it's a single, if it's a single file, uh, to, to load a game, a lot of times it's going to work. If it's an entire disk image, it's not a guarantee. You might have to get in there and create a 1541 partition. You can create subdirectories. Um, it is it is pretty deep and pretty vast, but it the, the compatibility is not a it's not a hundred percent. Absolutely. In fact, there's an entire website, maybe more than one, dedicated to creating games that just work on the RAM link that previously did not. And so people took those disk images and they basically coded them and, and hacked them to some degree so that they could be fully compatible with the RAM link. And there's, there's a lot of those. Um, so it's worth noting that you don't get the 100% compatibility. But my goodness, when you do have a game on here or a terminal program, or maybe it's a word processor, and it's just in there, you put all your favorite tools and your favorite games inside the RAM link, it's plugged in just like everything else. How often do you unplug your machines? Probably not that often if it's your main, if it's your main baby, right? And um, if you ever do unplug it, you probably wanna get the battery upgrade for it uh, if you are handy with <laughs> electronics. And, and, and that way you don't lose that data because you know it takes a while to move stuff back and forth. You gotta spend a couple hours to put your favorite things back on there if you lose them. But in any case, as long as you're plugged in, instant load. Really badass. And in fact, at least from uh, from an old school hardware perspective, this is easily one of the most highly coveted um, holy grail items, even to this day. Now, let's take it one step further. And some of you may have seen this already. This is only a couple months old. Uh, it's been in development uh, down in the Bay Area by a woman named uh, Evie Solomon. I hope I'm pronouncing your name right, Evie. Um, really amazing developer, uh, engineer, inventor, who created what she calls the back bit. And it's this tiny little thing that would, I mean, talk about, <laughs> talk about a size difference. Um, now let's do some comparisons here like before. Right here's the 1541 Ultimate with its three buttons and its uh, serial port that you have to use to plug in. Now here's the back bit with its one button, uh, and that's to go back. SD Micro, uh, and in this particular case, I was using tools like this, like dental tools, to get in there, which people complained about. So then Gideon wound up, you know, redesigning it to use USB drives, and doesn't that look fantastic? Don't you just love? That. No, I don't. It's an awesome device. I'm not dissing the device. I just hate the fact that people complained about this because this, this drives me bananas. I Anyway, but check out this beautiful design where you can easily put your finger right in there and just grab it, pull it, push it back in. I love that. I love that concept. Um, it's nice and tidy. It comes in this really nice 3D printed case. Good to go. Now check this out, you guys, <laughs> because the RAM link has a pass-through. I can just push her right in there. And the back bit is going to take over, just like 
it would if you put it in the cartridge bay. You will want to go look at Evie's uh, videos about this. She's created a few of them. She goes into a lot of detail, gives you a top 10 of why the back bit is badass and all of that. And then there's, of course, Jan Beta, who spends a lot more time going into some of the, the menus and all of that. But it is this was designed so that almost anybody can use it. This one takes this one takes some learning, right? When you just sit down and plug it in for the first time, it's not immediately obvious. And it was, you know, it's designed by one of the most intelligent C64 engineers currently alive on the planet. And it's sort of, the UI is sort of designed for highly intelligent engineer types. For the rest of us, it takes a little while to get used to the menus and the settings especially if you get into some of the SID stuff, my goodness, you can get lost in that um, for hours, if not days, trying to figure out what you're supposed to do. Still very, very badass. I'm not complaining. I'm just pointing out that this is this was designed for the everyman, for the layman um, to use and not have to really think about what they're doing. It has a real-time clock and it's it's set and it's beautiful. Has a real-time clock built in with a little coin battery. Um, and now I can go into, let's say, my SD card. It, you, you can put a 32 gigabyte card in there if you feel like it, um, which is amazing. You do have to format it in uh, FAT32 or FAT16, right? So I'm on a Mac, so I, I had to use the MS-DOS uh, option for that. Uh, but then once you do, you can actually create your directories just like you can with the 1541 Ultimate. And um, let's go into games. Um, and I just have to use the cursor keys to go up and down. If I wanna go back, just hit return. It's really intuitive. Not only that, it has a search function. This is crazy. You could start to say, I just typed the letter M and it jumped me to M. Hold on a second, let me go into M. Okay, so let's say I had a thousand, you can have a thousand files in each folder. And if I were to do Montezuma, it just jumps me right to it. M-O, boom, Montezuma, right? Let's see if I can find something with a little bit more, whew, a little bit more to choose from. These are mostly my faves. I don't fill it full of stuff. Here's a bunch of cards, right? So there's a, anything that's in dark red like that means it's actually not functional on the back bit. Um, these are CRT files, so it can handle it can handle uh, PRGs, D64s, D71s, D81s, CRTs, SIDs, Koala files. It has a SID player. It has an image viewer. And my friend Dan here in Seattle would kick my ass if I, if I did not mention the fact that it also has development tools that are available to anyone to create BBT files. BBT files. I mean, there's a lot that you can do there, but for example, let's say you have a multi-disc game. You can use the BBT, uh, the VacBit tool, to create a package of those multiple disc uh, images for you to run with the VacBit cartridge. Or maybe you want to create like a slideshow with a hundred images uh, and maybe some music soundtrack for it. You could, you could do stuff like that, and you could create some of your own. You can actually add metadata to your files here. You can save your game files to the back bit, and it never changes the original source. It always creates a new place for those modifications to exist. So everything always stays original, but you basically create um, your own version of whatever you need right on the back bit. It's incredible. Okay, so I, boy. Let's just start tight. Let, let's go way down here. This goes on forever, right? So I'm going to say, oh boy, yeah, it goes on forever. So I'm going to say, okay, so we got Ghostbusters. Why not? Let's go up to the very, very tippy top again. All the way back up to A. There, see. Now I'm going to say G, H. Look, it just shot me right down. You don't have to go. And here's what also is cool. Here's what. This is really, really amazing, right? Um, if I turn this off and I turn it back on again, it doesn't lose my place. I'm right back where I was 
With the ultimate, every time you lose power or turn off power and turn it back on again, you're back at the very tippy top of the pyramid where you're selecting an SD card or your USB device, which, okay, sure, you reset it. I love this. I love the fact that it has persistent memory of where I was last at. If you're playing a game all the time across multiple days, do you really want to go drilling down into that directory system over and over and over again? No, you just want to, you just want to get to the goods. Come on, guys. You just want to get to the goods. And she knows it because she's a gamer and she's a, she, she, okay, so here we go. Let's try Galencia D64, right? Let's try that. It's done. It's done. Now, you know, it's doing the decrunching stuff here, but it's already loaded. This is exactly what the RAM link would have done. Exactly. Want to start over? Hit the little button. Hit the little button. Go some goblins. Well, here's a CRT, so that's going to load almost instantly anyway. But here's a D64 uh, Universal. Let's try that. Oh, look, it's already done. Did you see that? Boom. Do, 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 do. So that, this is a fancy uh, newer version, obviously, that has all kinds of weird uh, checks to see what's going on. If you've ever tried to load that here, you, you realize how astonishing what I just did is or was. Okay, let's go up a few. Let's try a few others. Why not? It's fun. Uh, Millie and Molly is actually really fast, so that wouldn't be... Here's Montezuma's... Oh, here's Minor 2049er, right? That took over a minute on the 1541. It was snap of your fingers fast with the RAM link. Let's compare. Oof. <laughs> now, this is not the same image file. This is not the same image file that I have on the RAM link. Um, this is some crack that I found, and I just dump off a CSDB, and I feel like half the time when I get those things, it's a, it's a flip of the coin if it's going to even work or not. There's Montezuma's Revenge. Was that a cartridge image? No. Sure acted like it, though. Okay. Mule. Now, Mule is an electronic arts game, so this is a crack. If you guys remember electronic arts back in the day, they had some crazy copy protection that, at least when I was a kid, I could never, I was never able to copy anything from electronic arts. It drove me crazy. Um, you either had to buy it or you had to have a crack of it because it was impossible to copy. But here's Mule, and that took, that took no time at all. And it used to, if you try and load it off of an original disc, which I have, it takes a very long time. You got to watch the, I used to call it the ECA logo because I didn't know what I was looking at, but it's the square, the sphere, and the pyramid. Um, you would be watching those change color forever before you got to this amazing stuff. Now, it looks like there's a little bit of garbage here. That's interesting. And it's worth noting that, um, that Evie is in constant dev mode on this thing. She's extremely uh, proactive in trying to find and fix any issues that you might have. It's worth noting that a lot of times the issues you may have are coming from the games themselves, not her stuff. Um, but if you do find something and you're convinced that the code is good, she's a, there's a forum and you can go create an account and you can ex uh, talk about your experiences. Uh, well, I actually had an issue when I was first installing this for the first time. She got back to me within the hour. It was unbelievable, and we were having conversations, and my, image, my, my issue was solved that night. So, anyway, I just wanted to, to let people know that while the Ramlink is an amazing device, and it, it deserves to be highly revered uh, the way that it is in the Commodore culture, the back bit is brand new, and it has an enormous future ahead of it, and it is so inexpensive compared to one of these guys. You're looking at, you know, you're going to throw a Ben Franklin down and then you're going to have to ship it wherever you are in the world. Here in the United States, it's no big deal. Uh, over in Europe, you're going to have to spend like maybe, I don't know, 20 bucks or something like that to get one shipped to you. At the end of the day, it's so worth it. It's so inexpensive compared to so many other devices out there. This thing has what feels like un unlimited potential. And I can't recommend it more highly.
Amiga Love.